All right, we're getting word right now. Sirens going off in northern Israel. I remember that is a Hezbollah stronghold uh, north in Lebanon here, and there were reports that rockets were being fired into Israel from northern uh, Lebanon. Uh, but we're following that, but this exchange with Hezbollah would mean that they could be working in concert with Hamas, and we're separately getting reports that Israel is putting out warnings uh, that civilian buildings in the area are seen as, quote, legitimate military targets uh, as a ground war may be poised uh, with better than 300,000 Israeli reservists uh, it could be launched at any moment. Uh, I, I want to go to uh, Kirk Lippo, the former USS Cole commander, what he makes of all of this, because it comes at the same time, commander, and always good to see you, um, that we have a presence there. The USS Gerald R. Ford is in the region. Others are coming. That's gotten, you know, criticism from Turkey. As Erdogan, who has said that we are just adding uh, to the crisis. What do you make of that? Well, I would tend to agree. But first, Neil, thank you for having me on. Always a pleasure to be on with you. Same but here. when I look at what the uh, President Erdogan says from Turkey in that putting the Gerald Ford aircraft carrier strike group off the Israeli coast to support Israeli operations and help lend some degree of stability to the region, I think that President Erdogan misinterprets that. He claims that us being there could result in the massacre of Palestinians in Gaza, which is not what the United States wants to do. We want to lend support to Israel. We want to provide a degree of stability and really demonstrate to not only Israel, but our allies in the region, that we want to be there as a stabilizing force, not a destabilizer. Do you think this could be a repeat of 1973? Uh, people latch on to that. Uh, but I think it's a world of difference, Commander, in that, uh, you know, the Arab world isn't nearly as united. Um, many of these countries in the Arab world are succeeding and finding capitalism far more enriching than war. Um, so I I'm not so sure. What, what do you think? Well, when you look back to the Yom Kippur War in 1973, you had a group of Arab countries that coordinated together to launch a surprise attack and attempt to literally push all the Israelis into the sea and wipe out the country's existence. Right. And while you're having the attack from Hamas that was terrible and brutal, while you may be seeing further attacks going on by Hezbollah in the northern part coming from Lebanon, it is not the same as having these countries. Now, that said, I think that when you go just after the terrorist groups themselves, Hamas and Hezbollah, you're aiming for the wrong target. And what you really need to look at is that at some point the world, especially the United States, Israel and other countries, are going to have to say the state sponsors of these terrorist groups must be held accountable. Because if we don't go after the state sponsors, this is going to be a continuing pattern, and it is going to go on for decades. So at some point, Iran is going to have to pay a price for what they have done to Israel through Hamas and Hezbollah. But they really never do, right? And, I, and they're a lot richer than they were before the first wave of sanctions was put on them. I think prior to that, they had about $12 billion worth of money at their disposal, thanks to the run-up in oil, more like $76 billion today. So it's almost who cares what happens to this frozen or unfrozen six billion. They're sitting on a pile of that dough and God knows what they can and will do with it, right? Well, we've already seen what they're doing with it, just in the arming of Hamas and the attacks that went on. I mean, they make ISIS look like child's play in the depravity that we've witnessed over this past five days. But what we need to look at, Neil, is that there are a number of things that the United States and other countries can do to Iran. We can execute a whole bunch of sanctions to begin to tighten that noose again. The $6 billion is going to be a start. Every dollar that Iran has to spend on humanitarian needs is a dollar that they don't have to spend on weapons that they can export for terror around the world. Iran still is the number one state sponsor of terrorism, and it's time to hold them accountable. We need to begin the squeeze, and at the same time, I don't think the JCPOA or nuclear agreement holds anything. Got it. Commander, thank you and for your incredible service during some pretty scary moments in our country's history. We'll have more to this.